Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're here for Riker's six and seven month update. So you guys have been asking quite a bit for a six and seven month update for Riker. So I am here to fill you in on all things baby. Yes I am. So Riker is currently seven months old. He's a big boy. I am going to give you guys Riker's stats from his six month um, checkup which he had back on August 22nd. So it's only been um, a few weeks since that appointment. <laughs> um, Riker was 18 pounds, which is in the 54th percentile. Um, he was two foot four inches, which is the 91st percentile. Um, he had a 45 centimeter head circumference, which is an 88th percentile. So he is an overall very tall baby. He is honestly just the sweetest boy um, he's a very easy baby he's been a little bit fussier as of lately because you got your very first tooth didn't you um, he cut his bottom right first tooth um, which we're pretty excited about it's a lot earlier than Kaya or not a lot earlier but Kaya cut six teeth at eight months old um, in one week so Riker is a little bit ahead of track of Kaya. Ah, I read my mouth. <laughs> he is very grabby. He's on the move, you guys. Um, I did start solids with him at about five and a half months. Um, and we started with like all of the normal baby puree foods. And he just, as you can see, he wants to move. He wants to scoot. He can stand up now um, with our assistance. He is scooting all over the place. Um, he likes to like do the zombie crawl. Um, and we did just start him on puffs. So his doctor told us that as soon as he started showing dexterity and trying to pick things up with his pointer finger and his thumb, that he would be ready for puffs and things like that. So what were those like meltable type foods? Hi, yes you. Um, and he has definitely shown that. So we did start him on puffs this past week, um, which has been going really well. He loves his food. Um, he is a very busy baby. Yes, aren't you? Very busy baby. He's constantly moving. Um, yeah, he's just the sweetest boy. He has puked in my mouth twice in the past day, which is awesome. I think that he has a little bit of a stomach bug because he has had like runny diapers and some puking. Um, and I don't think that's in relation to the tooth to the teething, but um, I could be wrong. Definitely could be related, but according to what I've seen on other mommy boards, that usually puking and um, diarrhea is not necessarily related to the teeth, yeah. <laughs> He is still drinking six ounce bottles. I would say he's just on the verge of eight. He's very unhappy with me right now. Should we get you some puffs, buddy? So like I said, Riker has really been loving these puffs lately and we just get the Gerber ones um, or there's some like nice organic ones that we like to get too. There you go, buddy. There you go. He <laughs> just fistfuls. Um, he is in just about six to nine month clothes. Um, he is like very average sized, I feel, except for his length. Um, he is very average sized. What else can I share about Riker? He's just, he's such an easy boy. He's of course sleeping through the night um, and he is in his own crib now, which has been really nice. Um, we didn't transition Kaya to her own crib ever. Um, in fact, she went straight to a toddler bed at about two and a half. Um, she was always in her own pack and play in our room, but I wasn't comfortable with moving her until she was closer to um, that two and a half year mark. But with him, the reason why I was comfortable moving him right around six months into his own crib is because A, he was outgrowing his halo bass nest, and B, because we wanted Kaya to stay in her room all night long. And honestly, that was the best decision for us because as soon as we transitioned Riker into his crib, which they share a room, um, Kaya, ended up sleeping through the night and staying in her own room. Um, as of recently, we just went to California. When we came back, Kaya has been trying to sneak into our bed in the middle of the night. Um, and in fact, last night, it, she'll like come on like the very edge, like sliver of the bed, and we don't even know that she's there. And last night, she ended up falling off the bed on Mike's side. So last night, she was on Mike's side of the bed and it ended up falling off the bed and getting a black eye. Um, so now, 
<sighs> we are getting a little bit stricter um, and getting her to stay in her own room. But anyways, besides the fact. So Riker now, um, he is saying his first word. I wanna, I'm calling it his first word, uh, but he says Dada very clearly now. Um, and when he gets upset, he'll say Dada. When he's happy, he'll say Dada. Um, I'm working on the mama, but of course, Dada is easier to say. So um, both my babies, that has been their first word, their first sound, if you will, um, is Dada. So, um, and I don't know if I can get him to say it on camera. I'll see what I can do. But um, <laughs> he's just, he's such a good boy, you guys. He's a good baby. Um, he is still on the Enfamil NeuroPro Gentle Ease um, ever since transitioning him off of breast milk. Um, to be honest with you, I have considered um, relactation. Did you knock most of those on the floor, buddy? You are very hungry. He's like, feed me now. Um, I have considered relactation a few times. I'm not quite sure if I will go through with that, but it has crossed my mind. Um, but then I start thinking about, you know, my supply issues and I don't know if I would be able to, um, ever like, I don't know if I would ever be able to get, um, a really good supply back in again, but I just wanted to tell you guys that it has crossed my mind, um, in regards to relactation. Um, Riker is a blonde haired baby. He was born with dark hair over the past few months. It has definitely gotten more blonde. Um, and his eyes are bright, bright blue. Um, with Kaya's, they kind of start, stayed like a darker blue, like a slight gray blue. Um, but Kai, but Riker has like super, super bright blue eyes, ice blue eyes. Um, they're very pretty. Some of his favorite things, like I said, he loves his puffs. Um, and he loves his little sloppy. Is a little, um, like just like a comfort blanket, a security blanket um, with a little sloth head on top. Super cute, I got it from Target, but that is his favorite thing, it's so sweet. At night, we'll put him in his Nessa Bean sleep sack still. That's the sleep swaddle with the um, weighted piece and it straps over the shoulders instead of swaddling them up. It's just a sleep sack that zips up the side, um, but we'll stick him in that and then we'll give him his little slothy. He'll suck in his thumb and put himself to sleep. Um, so now that he's soothing himself to sleep, it is a wonderful thing. Um, and actually, so teaching your babies a good sleep schedule, I would say that's one of the most important things um, to establish when they are young like this is to establish good sleep behaviors. Um, so we have a very um, typical like sleep routine. Uh, we do a bath every other night and on bath nights, um, the routine will stay the same as non-bath nights um, where we will put him into his um, sleep sack and we'll put lotion on his little cheeks because he's got some eczema spots. Um, and then we lay him down directly into his crib when he is still wide awake right around eight o'clock um, sometimes 7.30 if he's really tired. Um, and again, we lay him down to sleep awake. We put his sound machine on um, and then we just, we let, we let him be. And he always puts himself to sleep. He's a very, very good boy. He um, is, he's very hard to get to laugh. Kai is the only person who can get him to really belly laugh. Um, he squeals and he'll smile and like half giggle for us, but then the only time he'll seriously giggle is for Kaya, which is funny. Um, Kaya giggled a lot more than he did. I think it's just a personality thing. Um, we talked about it with our pediatrician that he doesn't laugh as much, um, but she said just the fact that he is laughing and he's squealing and he's smiling, very, very normal things. Um, there's no developmental issues there whatsoever. Um, of course, as parents, we tend to pick everything apart. Um, but yeah, Kai is the only one who can really get him to belly laugh. He's very grabby. We call him the ninja baby. He likes to do the flip when you're changing him. Um, and he is still in a size two diaper. He is just a teeny tiny little guy um, compared to Kaya anyways. Kaya was an absolute tank. He's just itty bitty. Um, and I will be doing a fall clothing haul for you guys because I did go out and get them tons of, um, not tons, but like a good amount of, of new clothes, especially Riker. Kaya only needed a few things. Um, but Riker really needed a good refill on stuff. So I will be uploading um, that video for you guys next week to show you guys where I get all of my really cute outfits because I get a lot of questions on Instagram as to how I dress them and like where I get my clothes um, because he's always looking so stylish, like a little bro. He's like, he's very, I'm trying to get you guys like a better view of him, but he just wants to. Um, yeah, and I, 
he's just he's so simple he's so easy like I, we really haven't had any issues and he hasn't been sick yet knock on wood um he has not been sick yet um, with any kind of cold or anything like that he's had like a runny nose but it hasn't been anything serious um so yeah he's just been a very very easy baby um i let's see he is no longer on his po boy but he's stuck going everywhere um he's no longer using a passy he does prefer to use um to suck on his thumb or use his thumb for soothing um i've tried to give him a passy and he more so just like chews on it and like plays with it um he's not super interested in actually like suckling on it but um but yeah let's see what else are we doing lately buddy hmm? kaya is still super good with him um he <laughs> he is spreading his puffs everywhere there you go you want puff there can you show them how you can grab it <gasps> oh look at that hand oh that's another thing too is he will signal for a baba so when he wants a baba um he will signal milk baba he's a smart boy yes you are um he's he's just so sweet um so our typical routine with him during the week is i will get him up right around um 7 a.m he now naturally wakes up at 7 and then i will get him dressed we get into the vehicle we take him to daycare we as a me mike goes to work at like five in the morning um and i don't go to work until eight so i will take the kids to daycare and then i will pick them up come home make dinner he's usually napping while i'm making dinner um and then he kind of casually wakes up around six o'clock um, has a bottle and then he'll play for a couple of hours um, until about 7 30 8 o'clock and then we either start that bath time uh, or bedtime routine he does still have a little bit of cradle cap left over on the top of his scalp which i have been slowly but surely trying to exfoliate um i like to do it during bath nights i'll take they've got um, like a nice little like scrubby for um, their heads in the bath so i will um, use that to kind of exfoliate the rest of his um, cradle cap that he has and then I always um, lotion him up because he does have sensitive skin and um, yeah and he's got some eczema spots which come that, that comes from me um, on my side of the family because I suffer from eczema as well um, we have also um, exposed him to peanut butter which I have shared in a vlog we are instructed right at a six month appointment um, to take about a tablespoon of, of peanut butter and really make it runny I actually used the powdered peanut butter because it was easier to make it runny because you can add as much water as you want to the powder to make it any kind of consistency you want. And he had no reaction whatsoever. Um, we were instructed, now again, make sure that you're following your physician's recommendations. That's what we did. We just put a little bit around his mouth, a tiny bit on his lips and on his tongue to see if he would have any kind of reaction. And he did not. So, um, and he loved it, absolutely loved the peanut butter. Um, I would say that is probably one of his favorites, peanut butter, um, puffs, and then um, like applesauce or mangoes, definitely are his favorites. Um, as far as teething goes, we like to, um, as far as teething goes, we like to use, there's like these little um, mesh things. Um, I can't find it right now, but I've showed you guys in one of my vlogs before. Um, it's one of these like little mesh things that has, that has a handle on it and um, you put a piece of frozen fruit in there. We'll usually soften it. We usually do mango and then we'll soften it underneath hot water just a tiny bit and then that's what he uses for teething. Um, he really likes that as well. It's one of his favorite snacks or treats to have is a little bit of that. Um, yeah, but besides that, I think that pretty much wraps up Riker's six and seven month update. Um, he is just starting to pull up his legs underneath his tummy and get on all fours. Sometimes in the morning I'll find him. He likes to sleep on his tummy a lot. Um, he will flip over, which makes me nervous. Kaya was always a back sleeper and we put him to sleep on his back, but he always will eventually flip over into his tummy. But I'll find him sometimes in the morning on all fours and kind of shaking his booty back and forth like this. Okay, I just had to go and put him down because he was getting very squirmy. Um, I'm sorry you guys for the lighting in here. It's getting really dark really early these days um, and I didn't want to pull my camera lights and bring them all the way upstairs, but he is just the best baby and I wanted to hop on here and just kind of give you guys a really quick update this like informal like quick update as to how he's doing and some of the milestones that he's reaching 
he's very talkative um, he's always squealing he's always like bouncing he loves his exer saucer that's another thing is he loves to be in his exer saucer and bounce um, he is a very busy boy he's always getting into things so we are now in full baby proof the house um, mode because we've been like vacuuming every single day to make sure that there's no like little things left on the ground and this time around is much harder because we have a four year old in the house who does things like she's like mindlessly filling up a cup of um, golden rim. So little things like that where there's like food on the ground or last night she broke a necklace and there was these little like beads all over the ground it's like constantly just like panic cleanup mode um but anyways i think one of these days too that i will be doing an update on kaya um kaya will be for this month and i think it would be fun to do like a, an interview with her um and sit her down and ask her some fun questions um because now she's at a really fun age where she can really go back and forth um poor thing has like a black eye from falling out of the bed last night um but just crazy i'm serious you guys it's just like constant chaos in our house constant chaos just really quick too i wanted to touch base with you guys on postpartum now you guys know that i'm a huge advocate for postpartum this time around was a little bit more rough with Riker, um, not with like the healing process, but just um, mentally for me, I went through a lot um, in my postpartum stage. Um, I went through a very big job change um, right after I came back from maternity leave. And um, I feel like that has a lot to do with why my mental health has kind of been up and down and all over the place. Um, I really thoroughly loved and enjoyed my job. Um, I've never shared this with you guys before on my channel, but um, so I'm an accountant, you guys know that, but I had to change because of a benefit um, change in my job. Um, and ultimately it was going to be about a $9,600 pay cut out of my pocket and it wasn't something that I could afford. Um, and I ended up looking elsewhere. I really truly love my job now but it has been quite the transition um, especially with a new baby and it being summer and in the summertime um, our finances anyways are tighter because we're traveling all the time and just all of those things can really take a toll on your mental health you guys know again I'm such an advocate for mental health and I just wanted to stand I want to tell you guys that it's seven months postpartum it's getting better um, but I am still struggling with some postpartum things so as you guys heard me talk about earlier I've kind of been struggling with my decision to stop breastfeeding I've been considering relactation again because I've just been craving that bond I mean I feel like that's a part of my postpartum coming out and just rearing its ugly head um, I again you guys know that I had to stop breastfeeding because I had lost my supply after time and time again I tried every method every method um, that was available to me except for uh, I can't remember the name of it it was it was a pill um, that my um, doctor had brought up but I was not comfortable with taking um, because there was a lot of side effects one of those being weight gain and I had tried I've been trying so hard to lose the baby weight and this extra fluff that I have um, so anyways that is a little update on me in a nutshell where I'm sitting seven months postpartum my body is not one to my, my belly I should say um, down south area I always heal super great um, but my belly this time my skin is just hanging there and over the winter time I have a personal trainer lined up I'm gonna be doing a lot of intense workouts and heavy lifting things like that to really get myself back into shape um, especially for our trip coming up in February we have a family trip to Florida coming in February and I want to be looking the best that I can I want to be in the best shape that I can so make sure that you guys are subscribed so that you can follow along on my postpartum weight loss journey and my body transformation journey um, I'm really excited to continue to share that I have been sharing my lazy keto and what I've done to um, kind of lose some of the fluff but now that it's fall and winter and we're not as busy and I have more time to focus on um, working out in my body it's going to be quite the transformation I hope from here on out so anyways in a nutshell that's how I'm doing postpartum wise Okay, you guys, I am going to leave it there for this time. This has been a chattier postpartum baby update, but I just wanted to really fill you guys in as to how I am doing, how baby is doing, and what our life is looking like right now. Um, I will be doing an updated morning and night routine with baby and with Kaya. 
um, just to show you guys what our day looks like, especially with both of us being working parents and then running our side business as well because we are still running our little side business, little I should say, um, our pretty much full-time side business that we run um, making furniture and things like that. So, ha, ah, mass chaos, but you guys love to see it and I love to share it with you guys. So. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. Thank you so much for all of your guys' continued love and support. I am going to start crying because I am going to hit 10,000 subscribers this weekend and I don't really know what to do with myself. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your, all of your love and support. Again, if you're not subscribed, please join my little family, my big family here on YouTube, I guess. We're reaching the double digits, which is, again, insane to me. But I've got a lot of really fun videos coming up for you guys. Lots of fall videos. I've got some fall signs. Um, I'm gonna be doing some um, Halloween decor this weekend and lots of home stuff and all the quick meals and the cleaning and all the good stuff when you get trapped into your house for like six months. Like we are here anyways up in the Midwest. So, all right guys, I will see you on Sunday for another really fun video, okay? Bye guys.